Hi students, missing you a lot. Missing your smiles, your sweet faces, you are fighting for your places, you are complaining about friends, missing everything. We are missing our classroom, isn't it? But we can't just sit like that at home. We have to carry on with our studies. So I'm going to teach you biology today. I'm going to teach you plant and animal tissues. This is both for class 7 as well as class 9. Class 7, you have animal tissues as your second chapter. And uh, class 9, you have the second chapter as plant and animal tissues. The plant tissues has already been taught by Shutapa Chakraborty ma'am. She has given a video in the YouTube. You will watch it and I think you will understand. So I am going to teach you animal tissues. Now animal tissues, the students always say it is so hard to remember animal tissues. We can't remember. I am going to teach you a trick to remember animal tissue. It will become very easy for you. You know, when the neighbors, when someone comes in your neighborhood, don't you remember the names as Mr. Roy, Mr. Sen, Mr. Brahma, Mr. Prasad. In the same way, you are going to remember the names of the animal tissues. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, neural tissue. What are they? Who are the neighbors? Mr. Epithelial tissue, Mr. Connective tissue, the muscle tissue family and the neural tissue family. We are going to remember in that way. Now, we also remember the names of the children in the family who become your friends. Hmm? You can remember so many names. There are so many students in your class. You remember all the names. In the same way, you are going to remember the members who are there in each family. Now, first we will teach. I am going to teach you epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue is like a covering. It covers all the organs. It covers our body. So, the main function of epithelial tissue is protection. It does other functions also. It does the work of absorption. It does the work of secretion. Now, who are there in the epithelium? What are the different kinds of epithelial tissue? First, squamous epithelium. Squamous epithelium, those cells are flat, you know, and they form one single layer of continuous uh, cells on the body, like the skin. So this is squamous epithelium. It is, it, you can find it on the outer layer of the skin. You can find it in the lining of the mouth, the lining of the nasal cavity. You can find squamous epithelium. There is another kind of squamous epithelium which is called stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified means they are found in layers. They are found in different layers. They form layers. That is why they are called stratified. You can find them in the skin. You can find them in the cornea of your eye. Another type of um, epithelial tissue is cuboidal epithelial tissue. From the very name you can understand, they, the cells are like cubes. You can find them in some parts of the kidney tubules. Another type of epithelial tissue, they are like columns. They are, so they are called columnar epithelial tissue. You can find them in the inner lining of the stomach and the intestine. So they do the work of absorption and secretion. Then we have this columnar epithelial uh, tissue when they have cilia on the open end. They are called ciliated epithelium as you can find in your windpipe in the trachea. Cilia are present. And this cilia they continuously they show, uh, show movement, lashing movement. And then another type of uh, columnar epithelium is glandular epithelium. And they secrete chemical substances like sweat glands, tear glands. They fall in this glandular epithelium. So the epithelial tissue family is over. What do we have? We have squamous epithelium, we have stratified epithelium, we have uh, cuboidal epithelium, we have columnar epithelium, ciliated epithelium and glandular epithelium. Easy, isn't it? Next we come to the next uh, group of animal tissue that is connective tissue. From the very name, you can understand they form connection or bonding between different tissues. So they are very friendly family, isn't it? Yes, they are very friendly and you know the members right from childhood. They have been your friends right from childhood. Who are they? Let me see. First, bones. You have studied about bones right from childhood? Yes, the bone. And who is connecting different parts we are connected, we are all together, otherwise if the bones would not be there, you can imagine the shape, we would have a peculiar shape, isn't it? And then we have the cartilage. They are not so hard like the bones, 
they are flexible you find them in the ear you find them in the nose bridge the rings of the trachea so they are cartilage not so hard like the bones but they are hard and they are flexible they give flexibility to those parts and another type of connective tissue is that there which is called fluid connective tissue now bones and cartilage they are supportive connective tissue they are giving support to the body and then we have the blood and the lymph they are liquid they are fluid so we call them fluid connective tissue and they are very hard working you know you take the nutrients and the blood carries the nutrients oh you have come take the oxygen they carry the oxygen oh why didn't you bring the carbon dioxide back and they bring the carbon dioxide bring the waste products and give them in the proper place where they have to be thrown they bring the waste products so they are very very hard working blood and we have the lymph lymph is like blood only but they don't have the red blood cells and the platelets they have the white blood cells so their main function is protection also they carry the nutrients and the oxygen to those places where the red blood cell cannot go they come out of the blood vessels and they go to those tissue spaces then we have connective tissue proper there we have areolar tissue they are, they are like packing tissue you know they are like packing tissue they are found beneath the skin your skin is elastic see you pull your skin like this again it regains the original shape why this elasticity is provided by the areolar tissue and then we have the adipose tissue adipose tissue is mainly uh, made up of fat they are also found beneath the uh, skin they act as insulator mm -hmm. and uh, they store fat and like uh, uh, they are found form a padding around the important organs around the kidney around the eyeball and another type two other important pro uh, connective tissue proper are tendon and ligament what is the tendon doing tendon connects the muscles to the bones if the bones are and muscles are they are not connected to each other then they would be loose hmm? you cannot pull out the muscles from the bones that is because of the tendon and the ligament now this bone and this bone if they are joined like this and if you can't bend them it will become uh, very difficult so these two are put into position by the ligament they go do bone to bone connection so this is about the connective tissue we have bone we have cartilage we have tendon we have ligament we have blood lymph areolar tissue and adipose tissue is it next we have the muscle tissue muscle tissue you have studied about them right from the time you have stud started studying science three types of muscle tissues are there striated muscles unstriated muscles and cardiac muscles hmm? striated muscles are voluntary muscles we can move them according to our will we find them in the hands we find them in the legs and then uh, we ha and they have some striations on their body and then we have the unstriated muscles unstriated muscles are spindle shapes and um, they cannot be moved according to our will that is why they are called involuntary muscles and we have the cardiac muscles cardiac muscles also have striations but what is the difference with the striated muscles these are branched the cardiac muscles are branched and they are found only in the heart they keep on working as long as we live the cardiac muscles keep on working and the last uh, group of animal tissue that is the neural tissue it has only one type of uh, cell that is neurons mm. this is the picture of the neuron we have the cell body over here and in the, there is a nucleus in the cell body from the cell body are coming out the dendrons from there they are still branching and they are forming the dendrite then you have the axon and the axon is surrounded by the myelin sheath and you have the node of ranvier over here and these are the axon and endings and what are these dendrons doing they pick up the message from the neighboring cell body from the uh, neighboring uh, axon ending and they transmit the message to the cell body the cell body transmits the message to the axon to the next neuron so these are the animal tissues you are going to see the video two three times and you will learn it I, and you have to read the chapter again and again and then you will do the question answers question answers you have to do because those are needed for practice i'm going to discuss the question answers as i have done in the previous chapter 
through green apps and one more thing let me tell you whenever you study biology you have to say it with one notebook for practicing the diagrams diagrams are very important you have to practice the diagrams okay. today till this much bye